more than $2 billion in cryptocurrency was stolen by hackers in 2024. And in this video, we'll talk about the techniques they used to make that happen. Crypto theft is so attractive for hackers because once it's gone, there's no way of getting it back. And with coins like Monero, it's super hard to trace. So anyway, let's get into it. The most common method that hackers use is phishing attacks. And one of the phishing methods is by replicating a known crypto exchange and try to steal the credentials using that. For example, if hackers wanted to mimic a crypto exchange like Coinbase.com, they can use a tool such as PyFisher and host the fake web page on the cloud for free. They can also hijack the URL by using this domain for example instead of Coinbase.com which is the original domain and fish the login credentials using that fake login page. I have shown how hackers set up fake login pages in this video here on my personal channel and I will include the link for this video in the description as well. Another method is by using a crypto clipper. Think of it as a malicious program that is installed by a hacker on a victim machine and that program would monitor the victim's clipboard and checks if a crypto wallet address is being copied. If so, then the program would replace that wallet address with the hacker's wallet address instead. So the victim would fall for this attack if they didn't double check the wallet address they are sending the money to. This way, the victim would send the money to the hacker's wallet instead of the intended one. Moving on, another method that hackers use to steal cryptocurrency is by using crypto jacking. And this method also comes in the form of a malicious program that's running in the background of the victim machine. It works by using the victim's computer resources, such as the CPU or GPU, to mine cryptocurrency like Monero or Bitcoin. And hackers can control how much CPU or GPU the miner uses. The mined cryptocurrency is then sent directly to the attacker's wallet. And the miner itself knows when the task manager is opened, so it would lower the CPU or GPU usage accordingly if you open the task manager. And once you close task manager, it would increase the mining usage again. And people usually get infected by this by downloading and installing cracked programs from torrents or by visiting malicious websites that use your computer to mine cryptocurrency, such as the JavaScript miner CoinHive. Even though CoinHive itself was shut down in March 2019, JavaScript-based crypto mining still exists on the web today. Another method that hackers use, which is very interesting, is by cracking crypto wallets. Now this is interesting because there are two types of crypto wallets hot and cold wallets. A hot wallet is connected to the internet, making it convenient for transferring money to and from it. But it's more vulnerable to hackers since it's connected to the internet. A cold wallet, on the other hand, is not connected to the internet, making it much more secure, but less convenient for quick access. Now there are things called hardware wallets which look like an external USB drive and since hardware wallets are not connected to the internet they are considered to be a type of a cold wallet. But if hackers had access to that physical crypto wallet then they can use different types of techniques to try to crack the code to unlock that physical wallet. Now depending on how that crypto wallet is designed usually hackers cannot simply brute force the pin because many wallets would erase all the stored data including the private keys after a certain number of incorrect attempts. That's why hackers would need a different type of method to break into that wallet. So one of the techniques that hackers usually do instead of brute forcing is finding vulnerabilities that exist directly on that crypto wallet. For example, the Trezor hardware wallet model T had a RAM exploitation vulnerability in which hackers were able to find the pin and seed phrase of that wallet in the device's RAM during operation. So yes, we could extract the data from the random access memory using a tool like JTAG debugger for example, and use that data to unlock that wallet. Later on, the company Trezor issued a firmware update that secured that vulnerability. Moving on, we got password stealers. Now if you ever logged in on a browser like Chrome or Firefox, it usually asks you if you would like to save the password locally, in which if you click on yes, then the browser would save the password on your local PC. Even though that file on your PC is in fact encrypted, 
it can be decrypted using your main password. So if you ever save the private key or seed combination to your wallet on that local machine, then a hacker would only need to use your local machine credentials to unlock that wallet or get into your exchange account. Let's take Google Chrome for example. For Windows, it uses the SQL lit format to store login credentials, and it uses the Windows Data Protection API or DP API. On macOS, it uses the Max Keychain, and on Linux, it uses the Keyring or K Wallet. Now, most commonly, hackers will need to gain local access to that victim machine, and from there, run tools like Lazine or Mimikatz to extract and decrypt the stored passwords. If the target machine is a Windows target, then they can use scripts to decrypt the password because DP API encryption keys are tied to the user's logged in session. Or they can decrypt it by simply using a keylogger to retrieve the main password that is used to unlock that Google's password manager. And again, if you have your crypto wallet credentials saved on that password manager that got compromised, then you will be in deep trouble. Another technique that hackers use, which is less likely to happen, is by hacking the crypto exchange itself. This is way worse than hacking an individual wallet, because if hackers were able to hack an exchange, they would be able to access every wallet that exists on that exchange. For example, the CoinCheck hack in 2018, in which hackers stole roughly $530 million worth of crypto. Legally, the exchange has to let people know that it was hacked and pay back what customers lost. To be fair, when that happens, people usually stop trusting that exchange and would rather trade somewhere else. Now to secure yourself from these attacks, enable two-factor authentication and do not use a phone number. Use an app like Google Authenticator instead or something else that you have. Use multiple wallets and use multiple accounts in exchanges, meaning don't put all your eggs in one basket. Also, make sure that you securely store the recovery phrase. So use a password generator or a password manager and be aware of what you are doing online. For example, watch out for fake advertisements on search engines like this one here. And please don't download random executables and cracked software from Torrent. Finally, you can go to this website and double check for known crypto scams and fraudulent crypto exchanges. This will help you out find who's legit and who's not. So anyways, that's it for this video. Let me know if I should create a part two for these methods because I only discussed the most common techniques used by hackers in this video. I hope you have learned something useful from it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this.